Hey, welcome to our Q&A. Can you please show them what you were just doing with you were imitating me? <laughs> well, I think it needs some context. No, just do okay. it. She was imitating me. Hi, I'm Seth. <laughs> Even before you were going, my beard is cool. <laughs> no, it was my beard makes me cool. Is that what it was? <laughs> it was funny, whatever it was. It's the stuff I do off camera. Yeah, that I would, I want you guys to see more of because <laughs> it's funny. Uh, so we're going to answer a bunch of questions here, and then uh, if you have any questions to add, then leave a comment or send us a message. We'll do it in a future Q&A, or we can answer you through messaging. Messaging, if you don't yeah. want to wait. We are, that's one of the things we love doing is we'll just knock it out. answering the things that you struggle with or you are confused about. We like to simplify and cut through the BS out there and make things easier because it doesn't have to be that difficult. It's difficult enough to get to the gym sometimes. It doesn't need to be confusing. Yes, and with that, we have a bunch of questions. I don't know that we're even gonna get up to them all today, and we don't even have an order. You wanna just pick one to do? <laughs> Unless I choke to death <laughs> on my own saliva. I'm all right. Okay. Before we get started. Um, let's pick one. There's a lot of nutrition ones on there. Yeah, it's a lot of nutrition okay. stuff this time. Let's start with, is it okay to eat on some days and less, eat, eat. more on some days and less on others? Okay. Which is a great question. Um, So a lot of times with our clients, we'll give them recommended portions and they aim for that during the day. And they find that either they're not hungry on one day and they don't hit all their portions. And then other days they are hitting all their portions. And so they want to know, okay, well, what's more important? I'm not hungry and should I eat and just get all the markers? Or it, is it more important just to pay attention to my hunger? The question really depends, which is like my go-to answer. Um, it depends on what you're doing after the day you don't eat as much. Are you eating normal and aware of your hunger and you know able to be mindful of what you're eating? Or are you like, I'm starving, I'm overeating, I'm craving this. If the answer is I'm craving things and you're overeating, then maybe you should be pay more attention and be a little bit more consistent with your portions from day to day. So there isn't such a pendulum swing with your hunger. But if you do find that I'm a little bit less hungry on some days, maybe you're a little less active, not working out as much that day, and that's just your natural body, whatever, balance, <laughs> function, and, and that's just kind of how, how you, you, what your lifestyle is, and that's okay if you're finding that it's working for you. So it doesn't have to be any um, set way to do it for one person. Can you summarize that? Because that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, really, is, if it, is it working for you or not? Are you conscious and mindful while you're eating? Or are you finding that you're not in control and then maybe you should look at the patterns of what you're eating and, and see if maybe being more consistent is going to serve you better. Okay. So is that for people with, that are just doing weight loss or is that just any time? Any time. Okay. Did you touch on the fact that like it is, you shouldn't do extremes either? Like. I didn't. Because I feel like that's an important point too is, yeah, it needs to work for you, but also you're going to end up not having that balance and it's not going to work for you as well if you're like, okay, I'm going to eat a ton of food today because I want to have all these treats and snacks and we're eating out and I'm going to eat way more. And so tomorrow I'm going to make up for that by eating way less. Mm. Like that's not a good idea ever. That, that doesn't work either because then that just puts you in that mindset of like, Oh, I'm allowed to eat all these good things, and then I'm doing bad, and then they're yeah. doing good, and it just kind of kind of messes with your your psyche and the the, the way you think about food, um, and also. But if you do it a little bit, yeah, and you can stay like mm -hmm. like you said, like it's still working. Yeah, you're not overcompensating yeah. in any way, then it's fine. Definitely, good yeah. point. Okay, is that what you thought I meant when I asked the question? Yeah, huh. that's what I thought you were talking about. Was people who were like, "What if I want to just eat a bunch and then make up for it?" Oh uh, no. Okay. All right. Well, what's the next question then? You pick one. Mm, is it bad to work out every day? Um, no, it's not bad to work out every day. However, I don't recommend it. 
the the times that it, it let's say if you want to work out every day like if if that works better for you to have a normal daily or most days you're like it's better if it's just in my schedule and i do it every day that's fine but what really needs to happen then is that the workouts need to be pretty different as far as they either need to all be really short mm -hmm. and you're just doing a little tiny bit each day uh which will give you a, essentially the same benefit as doing you know two workouts a week that are a little bit longer so they either need to be really short or they need to be like super easy some of them need to be much lower intensity you sh it is Basically, it is not a good idea to do really hard, intense workouts every day. That is a bad idea most most of the time. Um, so, for for the most part, the people that we work with don't want to work out every day, unless it's like I said, unless it's just like ah, just something short, quick every day. Very few people do that. I think we've had a couple who that's they've had something similar to that, but for the most part, people do better with doing just two to three workouts per week and they're maybe half an hour long and yeah. that tends to give better results than trying to work out every day because if you are working out and it's it's like we're just talking a structured workout here i'm not talking about going for walks i'm not talking cardio. about well cardio would be structured workout oh, i'm saying i'm honestly, saying I'm getting on the treadmill yeah, I mean, if you're just going to walk on the treadmill or do something easy, you're going to go play a game of pickleball or whatever. Like, I don't call that a workout. To me, that's just do it being active. And if you're going to work out every day, then maybe some of those workouts do need to be those just active things. Otherwise, uh, if you're doing really intense structured workouts every day, eventually you're gonna, your body's just going to burn out. You're going to get hurt or you're going to hate doing it and you're going to stop working out. So the benefit to having two or three short workouts a week would be that you could be more consistent in the long term, get better results, and not get hurt. Yeah, for sure. And you're going to get you're going to get better results because you're going to have more time to recover. Mm -hmm. Not that those workouts need to be super tough either, but your body is going to recover in between those workouts, and you'll just see more benefits from it. So, okay, sounds That's... good to me. Cool. Next, you pick one. Okay. Um, does green juice or brain powder count as a veggie? Okay. Um, I am gonna say no. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think they're good. Like they're a supplement. They supplement what you're already eating. They go in alongside the foods you're already eating. So if you're already eating things that are not ideal, um eating out regularly, not having regular vegetables. It's only going to do so much to your diet. You'd be better off having a couple vegetables a day and that would serve you better because it's gonna be packed with nutrients and fiber versus a powder or a juice that is gonna be likely missing some of the fiber and not have as many benefits as just actual food. Um, but if you're traveling or you have a short term thing going on where you just wanna keep some greens in your system, it's not a bad thing to do. Okay. Does that make sense? I think so. I would summarize what you just said and you tell me if I'm right, because I want to make sure <laughs> that green powders or juices are not a replacement for vegetables. Yeah. But they can certainly be something that you still use from time to time mm -hmm. to get a little bit of extra nutrients. But because you're going to be missing so many other nutrients, it can't actually yeah. replace vegetables. Especially if it... I mean, if it's something you don't enjoy, I mean, I haven't found one green powder that doesn't taste like grass and dirt. <laughs> um, juice is enjoyable, so if you enjoy that, that's fine. But if, if it's something that is you're forcing yourself to do, I think eating vegetables is a little bit more enjoyable than drinking. But if your goal is also to eat more vegetables, you can't just say, okay, I'm going to take this yeah, powder. Yeah, you can't just put a scoop of powder in and say, oh, I had 10 vegetables today. It's not how it works. Yeah. So it's not a waste of time or money completely, but it's not ideal for actually getting what you need yeah. and what you would get from actually eating more vegetables. Yeah. Okay. That was simple enough. Okay. Good. Next. Okay. Okay. This one's a tough one. Or did you want to pick? Did go you have one picked up? What, what were saying. you going to do? I'm just going to go with the top. That's what I was going to do, the top one, but not because it's at the top. <laughs> We have very different ways of picking movies. I was going to say the same thing. 
Yeah. So, so he's like, okay, let's watch this, this, and this. I'm and getting, so I, I have think, a list of movies because we don't get to watch a whole lot. And I love watching movies. So I keep a list of like, these are things I want to see. And she's like, okay, well, let's start with the one at the top. I'm like, <laughs> no, we have to pick for like... How much, how long is it? What kind of mood are we in? We gotta like, do we want a drama, an action? A anyway, all right. So this question is at the top of the list just because it happens to be there and that's the one we're gonna do. <laughs> but I did want to answer this one. Do I need to change what I eat based on my body type? Now I have an answer to this that's less nutrition based and more science based. Do you want to take it from a nutrition approach first or do you want me to give my science answer first? Give your science answer, I'm curious. So body types are uh, something that have been popular in the past and I would say that's something that we did early on mm -hmm. and... Precision Nutrition did too. Yeah. But they've recanted their... Yeah, essentially the science behind body types and how you should eat for them is made up it's it's not it's not real and so no you should not eat based on a body type however i do want to say that what so so a lot of times what happens in the science world and the fit fitness in particular the fitness science world is that people go oh this is the new thing and you got to do this all the way and then it's like oh wait a second maybe not okay this is complete crap don't even think about doing this and really i feel like it kind of is somewhere more in the middle where it's like okay yeah there's not actual body types that dictate what you should eat along with i'll just throw this out there along with blood type and I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> and whatever dna all that is just that is there's not it's nonsense basically however the true part of it is that people's bodies are very different and some people respond to exercise differently than others. So certain types of exercise, same thing with food. Some people respond to different foods or their body responds to dieting and trying to lose weight differently. And so you do have to have a good idea kind of of like, okay, what does my body do when I am doing this? Mm -hmm. So your blood type, and there's DNA tests that say that you are predisposed predispositioned to do those things. Predisposed. Um, but they can't. They're not always accurate because your environment is a factor, and they can't take into effect your environment, the things that surround well, you. Well, they're also just not real. Yeah. Like it, it's not even just like oh your environment. Like it's just a bunch I'm of. Just it's nice, totally made up. Nicer anyway. about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Um. So the best thing to do would be to start learning more about how your body is reacting to the different types of foods you're eating and paying attention to your specific situation rather yep. than just following what something else says because anything from the outside can't know all the intricate things in your body your dna and your environment and get that right yep do you have any specific nutrition stuff that you would say about that? Like any specific things to pay attention to or not really? Uh, like as far as what types of foods? You yeah. Eat? I think unless you have a kidney problem, everybody needs more protein, needs enough protein, which we're, we can talk about that in another video. Uh, or we can answer you in a message if you want to know what that means. Uh, and everybody probably needs to eat more vegetables. Okay, but there's not like, oh, you should eat this because you should have more carbs because you tend to be this type of way or whatever. No. Okay. Would you say that? No, uh -uh. Okay. I was just I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. I just wanted to kind of look down the specifics of that because there, it's definitely things that even we have kind of hinted at in the past. And really what's going on is we're just it's just complicating things. Yeah. You know, and, and there is some old school thoughts that like you have to eat every two to three hours. And then now there's intermittent fasting where you have to give your metabolism a break. And all of those things are very personal and how it's working for you. The same thing with the eating for your body type. Is it actually working for you? Do you do better eating more carbs? Do you do better eating more fats? That's why certain diets work for some people better than others just kind of naturally what your body tends to respond to. Yep. There you go. Let's do maybe one more question. I'm gonna do one more, and this one I'm gonna do just, it's a very simple one. What shoes should I work out in? 
And That's an interesting one. Yeah, it surprisingly gets asked a lot. So and it, it it's kind of a s simple answer, but like you wouldn't necessarily think of it. Anyway, <laughs> I'll just answer it rather than explaining my answer ahead of time. Like a musician yeah. explaining their song before. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the the type of shoes you should wear working out well, first of all, it depends on the type of exercise you're doing. Obviously, if you're running, then having a decent running shoe may help you. Although what I'm really going to say to that is you should really just wear what's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like wear what's comfortable and is doesn't make your feet or body hurt uh, because there's some science showing that shoes that are really minimalistic and don't have a ton of cushioning are better for you than having super good, really well cushioned running shoes. And to be honest, wear what is comfortable. That's That's the bottom line. However, caveat to that, when you are lifting, since we uh, emphasize strength-based workouts because they're super efficient and you accomplish a lot all at once. I do recommend when you're lifting and especially if you're doing stuff that's like legs, like squats, deadlifts, it's better to have shoes that are very flat and aren't cushioned. What I see a lot of times is people have these running shoes that are kind of shaped like this and you go to do squats and the whole time you're your body's kind of rocking back and forth like this. So even barefoot is better than that. So that would be my answer to that question is find something super flat. Like they, I actually, I don't do CrossFit, but I wear CrossFit shoes because they're very flat. Mm -hmm. So like cross trainers mm -hmm. or even just a pair of like, uh, Converse that's chucks awesome. yeah. are super flat, or like I said, barefoot. Yeah. Or there's a lot of minimalism shoes out there. That Min are yep, Min like Vivo is a good one, um, but just just ones that have like a very flat shoe and not a lot of cushioning, lot specifically of for when you're doing leg exercises or just lifting in general. It makes it a little bit more stable and secure. Outside of that, wear what's comfortable because it doesn't matter as much as what everybody wants you to think. Or talk to a podiatrist. Sure, yeah, if you're actually having, <laughs> if, you're after, if you're having problems, then talk to a doctor. Yeah, but, for sure. So. Otherwise, wear what's comfortable. Yep. Good. All right, so if you've got other questions, leave us a comment. We will answer it later. Thanks for watching.